Hello, good evening everyone. So proud and uh, very honored not to be chosen as one of the speakers. And I'm very glad that I'll be able to, you know, at least impart some knowledge about this affair that we have now, which is Drug Control and Prevention Week. So especially that we have a representative from the Dangerous Drugs Board. Marami po akong tanong. <laughs> so I'm so excited to have this thing started. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, good evening, everyone. So let me just uh, share screen. Oh, disabled po yung share oh, okay. screen. <laughs> uh, in a while, in a while. Okay, attorney, go ahead. Okay, uh, let's see. Ayan po. Uh, PVAID uh, joins in the celebration of the Drug Control and Prevention Week. And we are glad to be part of this, really, from PVAID in Lapu-Lapu City, from where I am. So, so yan po, ako po yung speaker niyo for now. Uh, just make this short, dati po akong Court Attorney of Court of Appeals. And then, after the Court of Appeals po, Ito po, nag-found po ako ng isang assisted living facility dito po sa Lapu-Lapu City. Tapos now, we are now in the process also of organizing Solace Addiction Treatment Incorporated. Isa po itong faith-based na addiction treatment facility, but we don't just focus on the faith po because while we are in this world, there's also the physical aspect to consider. Okay? Now, to continue... Ito po yung theme natin, better knowledge for better care. Now, bakit po ganito? Why is it, why is knowledge so important? Now, it's because, sabi po ni, uh, sabi po ni Plato, si Plato po nagsabi nito, ignorance is the root and stem of all evil. Diba? Kasi nga, pag hindi mo alam, uh, hindi mo alam may ginawa ka na palang masama, may nasagasaan ka na. With a simple reason na hindi mo alam. And isa pong big example po nito, yung bubonic plague po, nung nangyari ito nung mga 1347 sa Europe, where 33% of the world's population na matay. Dahil layo na ng COVID natin ngayon. No? The bubonic plague. 33% talaga ang namatay. Tapos ito yung nag ng Salem Witch Hunt kasi akala nila Satanism yung nag na ng mga deaths. Which it turns out, isa palang bacteria. It's called Bacterium Yersinia pestis. No? Bacteria lang. Ang dami nang nangyari. Now, moving on. Ito, si Icarus, pati sa Greek mythology. Uh, he flew too close to the sun kasi hindi niya alam na mainit pala. Uh, yun. So yung wax on his wings, it melted and he fell to the earth and he died. Now from the point of view of the law, meron din tayo niyan. Sinasabi nito itong Latin maxim, ignorantia legis, non excusat. Sa English po niyan, it means ignorance of the law is no excuse. So it is. Kaya po, ganito yung theme natin. Better knowledge or better care. Knowledge is really important po. So we can extend our advocacy and care for others who need our help. Okay po. Now, just a brief overview kasi sinabi po ng ating representative from the DDB na itong Republic Act 9165. So let us take a brief uh, look at the punitive aspect of this law. So now the Punitive aspects, it is contained from section 4 to section 35. Now, the more important ones, ito po yun. Uh, section 4, importation. Ito po. Life imprisonment po ito. Now, the mo one of the most common, ano, ito mo nang. Section 6, maintenance of a drug den. Yan. Life imprisonment din yan. Section 8, manufacture. Ganon din, life imprisonment. Now, isa po sa pinaka-most common dito sa Philippines na one of the most common cases in court, itong Section 5. Uh, usually, pag tinatanong mo sila, selling. Okay, may selling sila. And kahit ano pong amount yan, kahit maliit lang yan, even if it's just uh, 0 0.001 grams, basta it's selling, life imprisonment dapat yan. So, another most common offense is Section 11, yung possession. Tapos, ano po, when mga 10 grams, pata, no, 50 grams, when it comes to 
Natamphenamine hydrochloride, life imprisonment din po yan. And then, another more common na case also is ito pong use of dangerous drugs. Now, we uh, a lot of those who are charged under the dangerous, uh, comprehensive dangerous drugs act of 2003, right now po, are very, masabi nating fortunate. Swerte sila. Kasi in so many instances, dapat sana life imprisonment na. <laughs> Good thing po, uh, there was this portion in Republic Act 9165 which was declared unconstitutional. Yun po yung bawal mag plea bargaining kasi daw it encroaches on the prerogative of the courts to you know set rules now ngayon may plea bargaining so they usually plea bargain to section 12 yung or 13 yung ano 12 yung possession ng mga paraphernalia which is uh, pwede kang mag probation so yun po swerte po sila ngayon na Medyo lenient po. Masabi natin the law is now a bit lenient sa mga drug offenders. Okay. Now, ayan po, overview lang yan ng mga punitive aspect ng Republic Act 9165. And if you actually think about it, the law is actually nakakatakot. Imagine, life imprisonment. Kaya, nagtataka ako, why is it that despite the ano the heaviness of the penalty but ang dami pa ring drug offenders but hindi sila natakot in fact nung hindi pa yung tinagal yung death penalty a lot of these provisions death po yung ano death yung penalty but still somehow they are not afraid uh, yun pong mga masasabi nating my substance use disorder hindi po takot yeah. bakit kaya <laughs> So, I think a lot of this has to do with knowledge po. Knowledge. So, which is why it's very important po itong curative aspect ng number 65 which has a lot to do with rehabilitation. Po. Because ta ang tao naman po, they are, we are rational beings. No? Uh, if we only know uh, the affliction that we have, then we can actually do something about it. Uh, kasi when you are in denial, para pong tao na sabihin nating nasa bundok, di ba? Uh, he doesn't know that he doesn't know how to drive. Kasi nga po, wala nga mga, wala mga vehicles doon sa pinaka malayong bukid. So he doesn't know that he does not know how to drive. Now, once he knows, pag pumunta siya doon sa sabi nating syudad, when he goes to the city, makikita niya may masasakyan, sabi na, nako, pala, hindi pala ako marunong mag-drive kasi oh, oh, may mga substitute pala ng kalabaw. Okay. And then later on, when he learns how to drive, oh, it's so easy. Ganito pala mag-transport ng aking mga goods from the bukid to the city. It's so easy. Once he knows how to drive, ganun din po yung marakaramihan ng mga masabi nating may substance use disorder. Uh, they do not know that they have a problem. Yan po. So that is why uh, hindi sila natatakot kasi alam mo naman isa ng, isang effects ng drugs is yung my false sense of bravado ka. Parang akala mo brave na brave ka, hindi ka na infallible ka, you don't make mistakes. So, parang feeling mo, mas bright ka pa sa police, mas bright ka pa sa presidente, <laughs> kasi wala, wala kang takot. But if these people po are educated, then they have a chance. I know of so many instances po na ilang beses na pong nag-rehab. Parang hopeless case na. But eventually, my God, naging may-ari ng rehab. Dating salot ng lipunan, now po helping hundreds of people recover. So there is something there no, to treatment and rehabilitation. And that is where I want to focus po. Here we go. Now, Republic at 9165, as mentioned by our good uh, colleague from the DDB, Miss Ella, hindi po lahat about punishment. That is just the most common thing we see on TV, on radio. What is very not known, uh, ano po, hindi po well known, but 
equally, in fact, I'd say even more important than the punitive aspects are the curative aspects of the law. Now, we will find this po dito sa section 54. Ito po yung first one. Now, under section 54, this is what we call the voluntary submission of a drug dependent to confinement, treatment, and rehabilitation. Now, this is very important kasi when we go to the police, uh, pati yung police po, they're not really very familiar with this provision. Dito po sa section 54, pwede actually ito yung maging vehicle that a person can get treatment before he can commit an offense. Now, normally when you go to the police, sasabihin nilang, say, knowledge that a crime has been committed ano, and the person uh, he has to arrest is the one responsible for it. So, isa yun. Second, kung may warrant, those are the only two instances po na pwede siya mag-arrest. Na kung ikaw, sabihin natin isa kang parent and sabihin mo uh, or sabihin natin concerned citizen, tapos yung uh, neighbor mo is a drug dependent. So, nagreklamo ka ng police. Yun yung sasabihin na police, I'm sorry po. We cannot arrest that person because kailangan pa namin machimpuhan na nag-sell or in possession. Now, yung mga things na yun po, hindi naman po yung basta-basta magawa. You can't just go to a person tapos kapkapin mo, hanapan mo ng, ng may drugs or ano, baka ma, ano ka pa niyan, uh, masabit pa naman yung police po, kawawa naman po. So, what a lot of people do not know is there's actually a way to compel these people who are actively using drugs to go into treatment and rehabilitation even before they commit an offense. Now, one of these po, itong Section 54. Now, pwede po that they can voluntarily present themselves for treatment and rehabilitation. Kasi, ano po, a drug dependent or any person who violates Section 15, yun po yung using, may by himself or through his parent guard or relative up to the fourth degree, apply sa board. Ayan. Kaya po, tuwang-tuwa ako na may DDB ngayon dito. Kasi essential po dito yung participation ng DDB sa voluntary submission for treatment and rehabilitation. So, doon po kayo mag-apply sa board tapos the board will authorize you or yung board mismo will file the petition in your behalf na masabit ka for treatment and rehabilitation. Before po, again, I repeat, before an offense is committed. No? So no need na po na mag-violate mo yung Section 5. No need na na ma-violate mo yung Section 11 or Section 15. There's actually Section 54 where we can convince our loved ones to submit themselves to treatment and rehabilitation. Now the question may be asked, alam naman po natin yung mga actively using, in denial po yan. Kung sasabihin mo, eh, adik ka na, sasabihin niya, eh, manageable pat mo to. Hindi po po ako adik, patry-try lang. Pero yun po, nakikita natin yung mata, uh, laki na, <laughs> yung skin, so dry, no longer going to school, nag-fired na sa job, pinabayaan na yung pamilya, in denial. ba Ang good news po, there is actually another section for that. Also, about, before we go on though, Sa yung mga voluntary submission for treatment and rehabilitation, pwede nyo pong makonvince yun sila na exempt sila sa criminal liability. Again, oh, importante, importante. Before po na, if you can want to try to convince a loved one, you can always say this. Before po you can violate a law, do not worry if you submit yourself, exempt ka po from criminal liability. Apo, second, sakali mang hindi ka mag-qualify sa mga uh, kasi may mga ano yan, standards, dapat nag-follow siya sa rules ng center, hindi siya na-charge ng any offense under Republic Act 9165 or hindi nag-escape, tapos hindi siya nag-post ng danger to himself, to his family, or the community. So sabihin natin, yun kasi yung mga under Section 55, yun yung mga requirements para ma-exempt from criminal liability. But wag po kayong mag-alala, sabihin man natin may criminal liability kasi hindi ka-qualified probationable naman po. 
So, hindi ka pa rin makukulog. Diba? So, ano po? Magandang ano na po yan, incentive sa mga uh, sa mga may substance use disorder to convince them to submit themselves kasi po, pag ikaw po ay nahuli under Section 15, 6 years and 1 day to 12 years po yan ang penalty. Pero kung mag-voluntarily submit po, exempt po from criminal liability. So, yun po yung gamitin natin pang-convince sa ating mga mahal sa buhay na lulong sa droga. Okay? Now, what if ayaw nila mag-submit? As I said a while ago. Ito po yun. The good news is meron po tayong Section 61. Ito po yung compulsory confinement of a drug dependent who refuses to apply under the voluntary submission program. So, ano po ito? Notwithstanding any law or rule to the contrary, any person determined and found to be dependent on dangerous drugs shall upon petition by the board or its authorized representative be confined for treatment and rehabilitation in any center duly designated or accredited by the board. So yun. Alam naman natin ang daming mga may substance use disorder na in denial. Ayong mag-admit. Feeling guapo. Kahit na wala nang nangangamoy na, ang taas na ng buhok, ang red ng eyes, but feeling guapo pa rin. <laughs> so, in denial nga, there is a way. There is a way to uh, compel them na pumasok po sa rehabilitation. Now, upon petition po, under the same section, uh, the confinement of a person alleged to be dependent on dangerous drugs to a center may be filed by any person authorized by the board, the dangerous drugs board po, with the regional trial court of the province or city where such person is found. Now, after the petition is filed, the court by an order shall immediately fix a date for hearing and a copy of the order shall be served with the person. Uh, let's go to the end part. Yan po. Uh, there will be two physicians who will examine the persons in a process called DDE, yan po yung drug dependency evaluation. Now, if these two physicians, they concur that the person is a drug dependent, then the court will order na i-confine po itong taong ito sa uh, Drug Addiction Treatment and Rehabilitation Center. So, yan po. I always, I always make emphasis nitong whenever I discuss Republic Act 9165, I always make emphasis sa Section 54 and Section 61. Because ito po yung mga provisions na wala pang crime na, na, na wala pang crime. Hindi pa nakulong, hindi pa nasira yung future ng ating loved ones. Hindi pa nasira yung future ng ating brother, sister, o father. Diba? Before that happens, kasi wala pong criminal liability, especially under Section 54. Wala po. So habang hindi pa nasira yung future nila, we can actually compel them to go to rehabilitation with the help of the Dangerous Drugs Board. Okay? Now, of course, uh, may iba-iba naman yung ano yung uh, severity ng addiction. So, kung mild ka, there's always Section 77 of Republic Act 9165 where you just go to community-based rehabilitation circles. You know? Meron din kung uh, sabi, mild, moderate ka naman, uh, there's always the outpatient program. Pero kung severe talaga, Yun na yung mga nang hold up na, you know, kumukuha na ng pera sa you know, bulsa ni mama, papa, uh, binibenta na yung mga, pati mga Pyrex. So, pag ganong level na po, severe na po yun, and kailangan na po yung talagang ipasok sa rehabilitation through Section 54 and Section 61 of Republic Act 9165. Yan po. Now, can be filed with the DDB and any person authorized by the board, which is the DDB, may file the petition in the appropriate regional trial court. So yun po yung ano, no? good news ng Republic Act 9165, which is not very known by a lot of people. Okay, now, ito po. Now that I've imparted po these sections, very useful sections before anyone po makakommit ng crime na life imprisonment na mahal natin, let's do something. All of us, let's do something to those people who need our help. Kasi a lot of these people who are 
my, my substance use disorder, there are actually good people with bad habits. Ayan po. Mabait po kasi man is created in the image of God. Uh, likas. It is our nature po to be good. Now, good people with bad habits. If you take away the bad habit po, mababalik po yung good person. Yung tatay mo, yung nanay mo, yung anak mo na good, innately good, babalik po yun if you take away the bad habit. The bad habit po of using drugs. Now, let's all do something. And there is the way to do it now with the help of the DDB because the only thing necessary for evil to triumph po is for good men to do nothing. Okay. Thank you po for listening po to me. Uh, back to you, Sir Mark. 